A lot of people have been talking about Iwi over the last couple of days, and I, and I feel like I have to do a bit of a qualifier, um, because I think the, the, the question does need to be asked, where do Iwi fit into all of this? I've got to also let you know that um, I'm not a member of the Whānau Water Task Force, um, and, um, and uh, anything that I've been saying about Whānau Water in the course of this conference has been um, just a personal appreciation and a commitment for the, for the work that has been undertaken from the vision right through to the implementation. So um, uh, just a little bit on the iwi, iwi uh, leaders uh, issue. The Iwi Chairs uh, National Forum is a forum that's made up of 67 Iwi organisations who have gone through a democratic process of electing their chair. Um, and, uh, and so those chairs represent those particular EV organisations in a national forum. And that is a very powerful entity, if you like. Uh, some of those EV have settled in their terms of their treaty claims, some of them haven't. And so you get a bit of a tua kanatena uh, thing going there. Um, and the, the idea is that in a forum, we support each other by providing strategic uh, direction and support, by providing uh, um, uh, help and initiatives and, and thinking and development. And, and so uh, you can see why the government has chosen the, the National Forum as an appropriate uh, point of contact for consulting with Māori across the country. Um, but I, I have to say, though, that um, um, different to the, to the, to the, to the, to the Congress that uh, Patarangi uh, uh, gave us in a, a couple of decades ago is that the, um, the EB Chairs Forum has flatly refused to form a centralised body. And so the, the old, the old, uh, the old kōrero about the whakamininga, uh, motu uh hasn't come to fruition. The EB Chairs Forum is simply a forum of iwi. And in that sense, it loses some of its value in terms of being a national voice of TV Māori. And that's what sort of kept the New Zealand Māori Council alive. I think there's a, um, uh, Api Mahuika once said, uh, one of our huis, that the New Zealand Māori Council was a two papa who needed to be just pushed into the hole. Um, but, um, but it's still going strong. <laughs> so, um, and that's partly because um, the Iwi Chairs Forum has been, I would say, I don't know whether the word's afraid or something, but uh, it won't go that extra step of, uh, of creating a representative body for Tiwi Māori Putanoki Te Motu. Now that can work for you and it can work against you because what generally happens in that scenario is that the, the bigger, more influential iwi get lots of benefit from it because they can, they can turn up at a final order partnership and go, we represent the Iwi Chairs Forum. And people go, wow. You know? But um, really, they're progressing the perspective of their own particular um, iwi. Nothing, nothing wrong with that, perhaps, but you know, it's just another step in the development of our nation that we, we haven't taken. So I wanted to just clarify that for you because I think it's, it's, it's important for people to know that that EWI Chairs Forum is not the be-all and end-all of Māori representation. Um, and the EWI leaders uh, notion is, um, is, that, is the, the groups that form out of that EWI Chairs Forum to progress certain issues. Um, and so I'm the chair of the social sector uh, EWI leaders group, which uh, progresses um, the issues in, so in the social sector and education, um, and also um, I'm very strongly supportive of the EWI leaders group around data sovereignty. And I, I want to pay tribute to uh, to our Fanonga here in terms of that data sovereignty issue, um, because I think it's really really important. So the three the three uh, oh here we are the, the, the three things I was going to talk about today was. Uh, EV outcomes, um, uh, data access, and informed investment. So I've sort of mixed this up a little bit of my own experience as a chairperson of my own EV, Te Rarawa, uh, and my own Lunanga, uh, which I represent at the EV Chairs Forum. And um, it seems to me that there are four PO that you, we have to tension EV leadership uh, against. Uh, one is Mana um, Motuhake. The, uh, the integrity of the Māori worldview is an independent knowledge source. So, so quickly we have forgotten that um, independence that we uh, once had. Um, you know, in 1861 we had a Māori parliament. What happened to it? Nobody ever told us what happened to the Māori parliament in 1861. Uh, it just faded away. Nobody even, nobody even talks about it. 
Um, and so that, that, that mana Māori mutuhake is something that we are actually starting to allow to slip away from us, I think, in many ways. And if, if, uh, if I had to uh, walk down the street of Kaitaia and say, pick any Māori child walking along the street, and I'd say, who's the chief of Kaitaia? They would go, there's no chief, bro, he died last century. You know? And so we've, even in our minds, we've abdicated ourselves from the responsibility of leadership of our own people within the mana Māori mutuhake paradigm. But I think it's something that we can, that we, uh, we have ignored to our, to our peril, really, because um, so much of it uh, can solve our problems for today, I think, anyhow. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to ignore in the context, for example, of, of, of family violence in the kainga, when we know that some of the answers to where we're going lie in that paradigm. And uh, so we've got a tension, as an iwi, we've got a tension now, and tension our, our outcomes focus, tension our, 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 our outputs, if you like, uh, in terms of that, that mana mutuhaketanga. Uh, on the other side of that thing, of course, is Te Tahaputea. And um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, a, a Keynesian economy, or I don't think it's Keynesian anymore, it's anyway, it's post-capitalist economy, uh, economic infrastructure is really important. And you see uh, from the um, uh, treaty settlements process the formation of, of uh, post-settlement governance entities, PSGs. It's just about a Māori word now, PSG. Um, uh, uh, but when you, but when, you, when you examine a PSG, what you will find, and I've, and I've found this from experience, having created a PSG, abandoned my own, my, my previous structure to fit the government's um, uh, uh, insistence on having a PSG before you can settle, because we don't settle with charity. Um, uh, what I've found is that when you form a PSG, what you do is you divert the benefits you receive from your settlement back into the Pākehā economy. Because what happens with the PSG, everybody goes and buys stocks and equities and gets 8.4% interest. What does that mean, you know? And, and so the, the notion of, of investing back into our people, investing back into our communities, goes by the wayside because we can't afford to lose money. We, we, we get sacked if we lose money, you've got to make money. And if you're not making money, you're losing money. And so we've got, we've got a tension that Manamutu Haketanga against that, that tahapu there. And uh, as assets come back, um, you know, we have to be very careful about what we do with them, how we use them, because um, people are looking at us and judging us all the time. It's very hard to be an iwi leader because you're under constant 24-hour surveillance. Uh, uh, te taiao is also a very important one, and I, I, I got the message this morning about the inclusion of te taiao in the final order framework. Now, that's very, very important because te Māori. So, um, Taiya is a very important uh, issue for us. Sustainability is a source not just of uh, physical well being, but also spiritual and intellectual well being. So, we've got to attention that against uh, our, 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 our issues as well. But probably the most outstanding issue has been Te Oranga Whanau, addressing socioeconomic deprivation and disparities. And uh, those, uh, that's, that's where we're sort of forced into having to uh, really try and be social welfare. And, uh, and so, so our Pākehā community says, us, why are you married? You've got your settlement. Why don't you go and do something about all this unemployment or something about something? And we're saying, what? Are we in social welfare or, or what? You know, and and it's, it's, it's a, but, but the thing is, there are people. So how can you really deny it? You know? And so uh, it, it allows, I think, uh, the, the government to sort of play us a little bit in terms of, of how we, of how we uh, interact. I was very interested in Tariana, uh, Dan Tariana's call this morning about partnerships. Partnerships? Boy, we've had a few of those over the years. The Second World War was one of those partnerships. How? They sent all our people overseas to go and die, die for the God, King, and the country and come back and everybody forgot about them. You know, so, so partnerships, I'm, I'm a real cynic about partnerships. I'm a, a, being from the north, we were, we were, we were, we were taught to be kaitiaki with the tiriti of Waitangi. And I've got to say that I haven't really seen one single action by any government since that has really given effect to a true partnership, kararu te mori with the tiriti of Waitangi. So um, I'm very suspicious of partnerships. And in my iwi in Tararawa, we don't really have partnerships with the Crown. We have relationships, but we don't consider them to be a partner in, in any sense of the word. And so um, uh, as we progress as an iwi, 
uh, in Tararua, and I think this is also very true for a lot of iwi who belong to the iwi chairs forum. You have to tension those outcome areas off against each other to try and make the best use of the meagre resource you get back as a result of a treaty settlement. If you don't have a treaty settlement, it's even worse. You become totally dependent. And, 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 and then, you, you, then you, aren't, you don't make any choices, then you're driven down certain paths. And so there's a responsibility, I think, amongst EWE chairs and EWE leaders to be able to get a, a balance and equilibrium between us, between us both, the green button. Um, and so um, uh, uh, um, what, we, what we need to do, and I think what, we, uh, what I'm trying to do certainly, is to try and develop EWE-centric outputs that align with final order outcomes. I'm, I myself am very impressed with the final order outcomes framework because it allows you to align. And Richard Stedman was dead on the button this morning. He said, it allows you to align with it. And if you align your outcome, you can then divide your outputs to, to, that, to, that, to that end, and everybody's paddling in the same direction. And when you got that, you're getting, you're getting progress. And we haven't made too much progress in a long time where we are. Um, so uh, that alignment is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a hard thing to achieve. The role of data, as, uh, as uh, Tahu uh, was talking about, is becoming more and more vital in that process. So um, data sovereignty, I won't talk about data sovereignty because she talked about that and that's really important. But the whole story, so the IDI database, for example, has got a lot of data on it, but it's data about individuals. And where is the data about the whanau? Now, I, I'll just give you a little digress. I won't take too long. Uh, uh, I've, I'm doing some, some work for, with the New Zealand police in Northland, which is a, which is a real miracle. Um, and, and in that work with the New Zealand police, I discovered that in discussing their strategic plans and developments, that, that they don't even know what marae a person belongs to. And I said, really? You don't know? You don't know what why? No, I don't. You know what whānau they belong to? No, we don't have no, no idea. Do you ever go to a tangi? No, you've never been to a tangi. You know? I said to myself, how the hell would you possibly understand that boy or that girl and the life they live when you've got no idea how they live it? And so these guys are like total strangers in their own land trying to make decisions about the behaviour of these individuals. And I was absolutely astounded. They were even more astounded when I told them what it meant to be a member of a marae, what it meant to be a member of a whānau, what it meant to have a kaumātua who could give you a bit of direction, give you a bit of a pat on the back or a boot up the whatever to say, do this or don't do that. And when they realised how much influence a whānau could have over an individual's behaviour within it, they were absolutely blown away. And so it seemed to me that what we are missing in the picture, to make a whole picture, is that arena of data. That's, and uh, Joe, Joe Williams, I uh, know, was it um, uh, Ben Dalton, yes, they talked about uh, Māori Affairs, uh, uh, land, Māori Land Court data. You know, Māori Land Court data is probably one of the most informative sources of information that you can have about a whānau. Right from when the land was first alienated, they got the, all the corridors there, all the relationships are there, all the tātai's there. And yet we're, it's, it's rotting away in archives somewhere that young people have got absolutely no access to. And yet if you go back and you read it and you, and you understand it, you become empowered by it. And so uh, it seems to me that as iwi, we need to be looking to collect that sort of data for our people to give us the whole picture. Because we're not getting the whole picture. And when you get the whole picture and you, and you drag in that IDI stuff, you get a, a, you get a coloured in picture. And, but I tell you what, I, I, would, I for one would never give that data to the state. Because I'm too afraid of that. I, I, I agree with what uh, uh, someone said earlier, that if you give it to the state, it's going to be used against you. And, and it's going to be used against uh, what, you, what your aspirations are, what, you, what you're trying to achieve. So I'm totally behind my toe saying we've got iwi have to invest in that four po thing. We have to invest in an appropriate repository for data to allow that information to be gathered appropriately, used appropriately, for the right kind of for the beneficial outcomes, rather than for determining what's not what's not not good about us. Um, uh, so so there you are, data. I'm trying to hurry up. Um, so but I think the idea about you know, for who who gets the data, what they're using it for, what what's the purpose, what way do they, what are the protocols they have for monitoring it, and, and, and accounting for it, 
that's just starting to melt away from us. Uh, the the Whakapapa perspective is really important. I, not, I did notice that in the, uh, in the uh, Productivity, Productivity Commission and the Repstock Report on Children and Young People, that one thing they focused on was identity and Whakapapa. And th those, both those things are derived from a good set of data. And, and yet they, uh, they both identified those as being missing elements in the, in, in the service of childcare. And even though they're missing elements, um, you know, uh, the, the, the government can still make mistakes with, with, with Oranga Tamariki legislation. So as we move ahead as a nation, because we, 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 still, we still got a tiriti of Waitangi, but as we move ahead as a, as, a, as a nation, we have to ask ourselves um, who holds this data, how is this data used, and as the government develops, not just the government, but as the, the nation develops new cutting edge initiatives to deal with issues, to deal with problems, then um, the, the availability and use of that data is going to become more and more important. And the uh, importance of whakapapa in the analysis uh, will be even more important than any solution that we have. So um, I, I love the OCAP thing. I think that's really fantastic. We should, we, you better bring that to the EV chairs and, and, and get us to approve that sort of thing. But see, there you are. Uh, it takes uh, resources, it takes capitalization. And so it brings me to the, to the uh, I'm sure I am running out of time, um, to, the, um, to, the, to the idea of where does an iwi invest? How should it invest? Because my iwi, for example, we got back, I don't know, 60 something million dollars in a settlement. But as Joe Williams said yesterday, it's enough to, it's enough to buy a new car. It's about, you know, it's, it's really, it really is it's just a nothing in terms of where it's gonna take us. And so we have to be very careful about how and where we invest. We don't want to go and be, uh, build, why would you want to go and build a bloody prison? You know, because that is just so backward looking. Um, uh, you, you, would, you wouldn't invest there, you'd invest somewhere else in the chain, you know, you, you wouldn't be in there. Um, and, yet, and yet I've got constituents who are screaming at me, build a prison, we'll make, make money out of the prison. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> um, so it has to be, it has to be uh, the sort of investment that's, that's long term, durable, that's appropriate, that, that, that's focused. Um, and it has to be strategic, so you can't just go willy-nilly, quick draw, invest here, invest there. I'm, 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 the, I'm the, probably one of the, the most rogue EV leaders in the country because I, I, I forced my EV to buy land. And they said, well, why? Why, why would we buy this? Not, it, it, it doesn't wash its own face. I said, who cares? You know, so, you know that, that's what they say about investment. If it doesn't wash its own face, don't do it. I said, if that was the case, we wouldn't do anything. We'd just sit on our bloody hands all day and watch TV. You know, because most, most uh, EV initiatives and, and needs for EV come from a deficit position. And so it will never wash its own face. And we've got to, we have to be brave and courageous and, and take the step and invest in it. So, um, uh, but at the same time, of course, we have to be um, uh, cost efficient. We can't just invest in it willy-nilly. Um, I, I forced my runanga to, to, to buy some land back recently and it's still not paying for itself. So I'm, I, every meeting I get a big, oh, you going to buy that bloody land, you know? But, I, but I, I know that in 10, 20, 30 years time, they're going to be so bad we bought that land. You know, so, so you've got to look ahead a little bit. Um, and um, of course, maintaining momentum. As an iwi who settled, we have an obligation to not go backwards. If we, if we, if we, if we settle and we've got all this land back and conservation stuff and, and dollars, and if we had to go backwards, we'll be sacked tomorrow. So uh, every year I've got to account for that and I've got to show that we have progressed, we have advanced. And I tell you what, it's a really, really difficult thing to do because our people are really hard judges and they're really blunt, they provide, provide really blunt and rigorous feedback. And, um, and you, you really have to be like a duck. Um, you have to just go like this and get over here, you know. Um, and I'm so fortunate, really, that I was brought up by old people because if I wasn't, I don't think I would survive the process. And I can see why people run away from it. Say, oh, I wouldn't want to be an EV, no way, man. And, and I can see why people wouldn't want to be. But someone's got to be. And, and it's that, it's that, that, that manamotu hake uh, th thing again. You, we've got to stand up and be counted as Iwi Manamutu Hake. And so um, uh, the last point is the issue of being mana enhancing. I've been taught about mana um, as, uh, through my, throughout my, my life about mana. And uh, mana, mana, mana atua, mana whenua, mana tangata. Those are the three strands that, that, that Māori Marsden 
hammer it into our, our thinking. And, um, and, uh, and so everything I do, every, every day I work, in my, and I've been the chair of my UB now for 13 years, um, you, 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 you have to make sure it's mana enhancing for everybody involved. And uh, even when somebody gets up at an AGM and screams at you and tells you you're a kūpapa, and, and you, 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 you've still got to enhance their mana. <laughs> and I say, hi. Kia ora, kia ora, auntie, kia ora. <laughs> and I've seen a few of those kia oras go around. So. Um, and, and someone also mentioned yesterday the, the, the marae. Well, the marae is a very important institution. Uh, what well, my tupuna called the institution of our four bears, brought, brought here from Hawaii, the marae, the oldest institution we have in this country. And, um, and, 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 but I can see marae is beginning to diminish. The roles of marae begin to diminish, certainly in our rural community in the north, and uh, being replaced with clubs now, with social, social networks. Uh, you know, if somebody dies in my, at my, in my kainga, if somebody dies, it'll be all over the social network to many, many more people in half an hour than it would take us three days to hear at home. And so we have to recognize that phenomena uh, and, and take our marais to a new dimension. And uh, so only 12% of our people live in our rohe. And so how do you cater for an iwi like that? And, and, and so I'm, I'm saying, you know, let's, let's televise all our tangis and have everybody overseas hook in instead of come flying, spending thousands of dollars flying home. And, we have, we have to be innovative, because all they're going to do is come home, spend half an hour in a whare, and spend three days outside smoking. You know? <laughs> so we're, we're better off getting something more productive out of them. Now they know, you don't eat enough water, me too. No one can cook to cook to eat. That's to cook. Ngakai kore ro ngarai ruane. Ah, tenakoto, tenakoto, kero kuhi mai tato.